Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And now today, a little bit in history. I'm going back to the year 1971 to share with you what happened on this day, uh, 13th of September. It was a four-day prison revolt uh, you know, in a, a place called Attica. It's called the Attica Prison in the United States. That eventually led to the loss of dozens of lives, including um, um, uh, prison wardens and police officers, uh, prison guards, as they're popularly called. Um, the revolt basically it was based on uh, prisoners' demands for better living conditions and political rights, and it took place on this day with you know approximately 2,200 men that were incarcerated in the Attica Correctional Facility, um, um, you know that was initially built to accommodate just 1,200, and they eventually rioted and took control of the prison, taking 42 staff hostage. During the next four days of negotiations, authorities agreed to about 28 of their demands, but this still didn't stop the massacre and the loss of lives um, that eventually occurred. By the time the uprising was over, at least 43 people were dead, including 10 correctional officers and civilian employees and 33 inmates. Um, it all started within a larger uh, context of poor prison facilities. Uh, you know, they had uh, very poor food. The conversations uh, of the time that they had to speak with uh, relatives was also very, very short, and they had a, uh, an iron mesh that was uh, placed between them and their relatives when they came visiting, and also overcrowding um, in the prison. This is as far back as 1971. But at the end of these four day negotiation, and of course, the storming of the prison by um, uh, uh, police officers uh, that fired you know, weapons at these um, uh, prisoners, 33 of them eventually died. Ten correctional officers died, and some prison staff, you know, also died. Some of them was they had their throats slit by the prisoners. Um, it then, of course, you know, came, you know, or eventually led to a change in the New York State prison system. You know, they had to improve on certain things, and I'll quickly share some of the things that they then improved on. They had to now pr start providing more basics, such as uh, more shower time, more soap, medical care, and family visits. Introducing a grievance procedure in which inmates could report actions by a staff member, and also creating liaison committees in which inmates elect representatives to speak for them in meetings, and um, also providing access to a higher education, you know, among other things. But of course, you know, those lives had to be lost, and that riot had to happen for four days before these things came in. Indeed, indeed. It was known as one of the bloodiest riots. It is still the bloodiest riot you know? in U.S. history. Man. But, but the good thing at the end of the day was the fact that it spurred this, you know, protection uh, movements for, for, for pr the rights of prisoners and, you know, made sure that prisoners were able to get some 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 basic things you know like you know things you mentioned more family time you know prisoners now had the right to be free from racial segregation right yeah. to be free from sexual assault they had the right to humane facilities rights to good conditions you know so yes um this was a very sad day in history in the united states but you know at the end of the day it opened the doors for more conversations and more policies regarding um, prisoners. Yes, they had committed crimes. Yes, they are now incarcerated. But how should they be treated? So, while they're in still prisoner rights. Absolutely. Yes. You know, they're still human beings, and they still have you know a lot of um, rights. And the that's why that we continue to have um, conversations like that in Nigeria regarding how people in prisons are kept. You know, just over the weekend, and you know, colleagues of mine were just talking about how you know in prisons in Nigeria you don't even have space to stand, and that everybody has to squat like this because there's really no space. You, you can only have people who have wealthy, influential families that can afford to buy them a bed space in prison. So the, the, the quality of life in prison, you know, the treatment of prisoners here in Nigeria, when you compare it, is a very, very far cry. We've heard of cases where, you know, it's stated as a joke, where Nigerians, even people of other nationalities who are in prison because of the quality of life they're getting, how they get good meals, how they have a decent place to sleep. When it's time for them to be out, they try to harass the warden so they remain in prison where they seem to be getting a better living condition where, you know, than when, when they're outside. And that's because of how much improvements have been made into prisoners' welfare in other developed countries. Yeah. So Nigerians need to learn. You know, we've seen investigative stories um, like Anas Aramayo Anas, the famous um, Ghanaian journalist who went into a prison in Ghana to uncover how Ghanaian prisoners were living. It was a terrible, terrible condition. How they fed, how they lived, how they ate, the, you know, the, tri the inhumane treatment that were meted out to them. So we really do need to learn, really. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I think I've also seen on YouTube videos of, uh, you know, the worst prisons, in, you know, on the, on the continent. 
Um, a lot of them outside Africa, though. Some of them, in, I think, in Thailand, in China, some very, very terrible places. Mm. Um, but you know, it's it, 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 they're dangerous, you know, and um, you know, some of the worst places to be. Um, but at the same time, you know, it, it, it's it's it still you know creates some space for the rights of prisoners. Um, Nigeria has you know done a little bit by changing you know the name to the Nigerian Correctional, Correctional Service Services. or something like that. Um, but you know, you it we need a change of structure, in, yeah, not a change know, if, of name. If, yeah, if those rights, you know, aren't um, completely hmm. implemented. So, on this day in history in 2019, a U.S. actress we all know and maybe even love, Felicity Hoffman, was sentenced to 14 days in prison, and that's after she was indicted for um, paying about 15,000 U.S. dollars. You know, that's for her daughter's SAT scores to be um, tampered with. You know, for her to get a better chance at, you know, getting into the high scoring universities and, you know, be successful in life and take up acting as a career. So it was a series of college admissions fraud and scandal that was unveiled um, around this time. This was around May, early in the year, around May. Then in September, that's when she was sentenced to 14 days in prison. You know, it was one of the largest college admission um, cheating scandals in the country. She, um, she was sentenced to 14 days in, in prison. Um, also, she received 250 hours of community community service she had to pay a fine of 30,000 US dollars and um, she also had one year supervised release and you know this was because in 2017 she had paid money to schools to you know increase her daughter's chances of you know getting into um, high top scoring universities and um, before her sentencing Hoffman apologized to her family members apologized to the school apologized to her daughters um, she said quote I was frightened I was stupid I was wrong I am deeply ashamed of what I have done there is no excuses there's no justifications for my actions period you know she really apologized but it wasn't just her there were about 37 other parents who had been paying money you know to have their children's um, SAT scores forged you know so that it can it, it, it can be more um, competitive or enter more competitive schools you know this scandal involves elite schools across the country including Yale Stanford University of California Los Angeles Georgetown you know it just exposed the heights and the lengths that parents go through and go to actually you know to make sure that children go into the right schools and it also just exposed the fact that University college admissions, especially into these elite schools, can sometimes be slanted, you know, to favor those who are rich and those who who, who can buy those scores, you know. So, yeah, well, um, that really was what happened today. For Felicity history. Hoffman's case, uh, this is a very, very clear example of being white and how being white alone favors you in the United States. Mm. Um, because I remember that? very well when this story broke <laughs> yeah. um, and how much you know, controversy it caused um, only for the U.S. or well, the United States, well, everyone who had been following the case to be shocked that she got just 14, 14 days. days. And then they started to point out numerous cases where the uh, uh, accused was a black American who had done, a, 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 a done something that was 10%, 5% of what Felicity Hoffman had done here. Yeah. And they had been given yes. five years in prison, 10 years in prison. You know, there's a particular woman that I believe that um, that um, I think she she had lied about her address so that her child would be able to go to a different you, school, yeah, a, better a better school. school. Yes, yeah, it's not like she wasn't going to pay; she was she was paying, but she had to lie about her address so that they can you know put you know her child in a better school. And she got you know three, four, five years in prison just for that, or maybe even more. There have been many cases of black people who do the barest minimum didn't crush their Maggie well inside stew, they get 10 years in, in jail. But Felicity Hoffman got 14 days, and that's it. That is a wrap for something as huge as that, that exposed corruption um, in the university system and the, the fact that people were bribing to get their kids into these universities. We joke about those kind of things here and say people pay for jump and, you know, uh, their special centers and some, some of all of that, which are equally crimes. Um, but it, it, this was a very, very clear court example of being white in America, and how the justice system treats you different. Mm. And that's it on um, Today in History 2019. Felicita Hoffman gets 14 days in prison uh, for Barbian uh, officials, um, school officials, with 15,000 naira to make sure they're... 15,000 dollars to make sure um, her, her child gets, you know, into 
better schools. All right, then I spoke about 1971, the Attica massacre in the Attica Correctional Center in New York. Um, and of course that happened on this day also. 43 people lost their lives, 33 of them were prisoners and the other you know, 10 were uh, correctional officers and staff.